Okay, folks, if you're expecting to hear warm and fuzzy, that's not going to be part of this. As a matter of fact, you're not going to hear warm and fuzzy for the next several weeks. The end of the church year takes a specific direction in terms of which scripture is chosen and what the orientation is. And it, you're going to hear themes come up over and over again in all of the readings. And they talk about waiting and longing and being prepared, about staying awake, about a day which people call the day of the Lord, the day that God will make everything right. And for those of you who aren't right, you're going to get yours. That's the theme. That's what's said. It is about life. It is about judgment. It is about choices. And it's about our creed, where we say in a very simple sentence, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. You're going to say those words later on in this Eucharist. So every year, the last several weeks of the church year, liturgical year, and the first week of Advent, all the same, we're asked to think and reflect and pray about some very serious stuff. And the questions that those Christians posed to each other are the same questions that we in the 21st century possibly ask ourselves. Is this really all there is? And why do I bother to live a Christ-like life? People who do evil, they get what they want, and there's so much of it, and we can't run away from it, and we are bombarded by it. And if Christ is really going to come back and judge us, when's he going to do it? And what about the people who have died? What happens to them? So what does Jesus do? Jesus does what he always does. He tells a story. And he takes something that people really focused in on. He uses the example of a wedding. All right? Now, when I was a young priest, I always I had this attitude about myself that, it, and, and it's cultural, OK? Like, you all don't know what celebration is until you go to an Italian wedding, OK? But now I'm old enough to realize that pretty much it's universal, whatever your particular ethnic persuasion, background, uh, or whatever. Weddings are, weddings are a time we get to be ourselves, isn't it? Sometimes too much of being ourselves. To use Cynthia's example, sometimes there are too many people who realize they only took one or two glasses, sips out of the wine glass, they just don't realize how many glasses they've been sipping from. <laughs> but we don't get how among a terribly oppressed, conquered people who are so poor, what a wonderful celebration a wedding was. And what Jesus does is he uses to say, he says, think about a wedding. And immediately everyone gets their attention. Boom, everyone's listening in. And they think they're going to get a warm, fuzzy story. And he says, no. And then he cites a custom that, to be honest with you, none of us actually know the custom he's referring to. Uh, this thing about the bridesmaids hanging out, waiting for the bridegroom to come, and having torches and a kind of candlelight procession. There's no other source for this custom. Now, obviously, this must have taken place for Jesus to use it in his story. People would have recognized it. But I can't tell you the amount of trees that have died creating the pages for the commentators, the scholars, the mystics, and the preachers who have written their sermons and their explanations of what the custom is and what it's about. Zillions of pages. And in the end, they don't know. But here's the point. We are the ones who believe that the Lord, who we hold to be God among us, will one day come again to judge the living and the dead. And whether you live long enough to see that day or whether you die beforehand, it really doesn't matter. The message is the same and the theme is the same. Be prepared. Be prepared. Live as though Christ were coming for you today. Jesus uses an example. He says, now imagine you have 10 of these women who are supposed to be, I guess, part of the candlelight procession for the groom, if that's what this was. And their problem isn't that they fell asleep, because everyone falls asleep. Everyone is flawed. Everyone doesn't do what you expect them to do. Jesus' closest friends fell asleep on the night he needed them most. But the mistake they make, the mistake we make, is they still try to live their lives on their time rather than God's time. We don't live prepared to meet Christ on his terms. We think we can set the stage for ourselves. We don't believe that, yeah, I know I'm going to die someday. And yes, the older I get, the more that's a reality to me. But as you are younger, that's out there somewhere. And I'll let you know a little secret. Even though you get older, it's still out there somewhere. OK, you don't think about it. But that someday could be today. 
Last week, I mentioned specifically, because the theme was the same in the sermon, what did I say? None of us know when that calling will be, and as I was saying those words, what happened in a church in Texas? 26 people went to church, and that was the day the Lord called them home, through the acts of somebody incredibly evil. We just don't know. Our life in Christ is more than holy words. It is about holy living. It is about being prepared for holy dying. It's about making Jesus a priority in our lives. So if you take anything home, I want you to take two things home with you, two thoughts. Think about it, reflect upon it, pray about it. The message is the same. The first thing is, you know, there are just some things you cannot do at the last moment. So if you think that living a Christ-like life is something you're going to put on, and I'll get to it when I have the time, you don't know when that last moment's going to be. As I tell my students at the seminary, if you think you're going to study for a canon law comprehensive exam and you're going to pick up a book that morning to prepare for that exam, I promise you, I will disappoint you. <laughs> you laugh. You have no idea how hard this test is. Okay? And I do it for a purpose, too, to kind of teach them a lesson. It's more than just a studying of what's the text in the book. I also pick a day I know they're going to be stressed out by other things. Because guess what? You don't get to choose your life and, uh, as a priest. You don't plan your life each day and think you're going to have time to do everything. I guarantee you something will come up that you don't expect. So I'm not doing you many favors by being nice to them, so believe me, I don't do them any favors. So there are some things you cannot put off to the end because we just don't know when that end will be. And the second thing, there's some things in life you just can't borrow. You can't borrow someone else's faith. You cannot borrow someone else's character. You cannot borrow someone else's relationship with the Lord. Either you've established it, you've worked at it, you have set this up, Jesus really means something to you, or he doesn't. We nurture and develop what God has given us, and if we don't, we lose it. So the themes of today, very serious, and they will continue next week and the week after that, and frankly, the week after that as well. We believe that the Lord will come someday to judge the living and the dead. We believe that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And we believe that God will call us home. Question to all of us, are we ready? Do we take seriously 